having left the blue room and made our way to the green gallery, please turn your attention to the painting on the right wall. Death and Life. Ah, a Klimt, you say. I recognize this one. Those colors, those brush strokes, those bulging muscles and peaceful smiles. This one, you say, I have seen in the art books. This one, you say, is painted by a person with whom I am well familiar, right? Wrong. <laughs> I must tell you that this painting that looks like a Klimt, that feels like a Klimt, is not a Klimt. One, two, three, four. We do not house paintings by Klimt here at the Clifton Collection. Not because Klimt isn't a beautiful, powerful painter, because he is, but because you can see his work in other museums, in art books, on postcards. Here at the Clifton Collection, we are dedicated to the mission of preserving work, and thus history, created by artists you might not see anywhere else. Members of this very community. Artists who speak our language, who represent us, who share our concerns and explore our dreams and desires. Our death in life was painted by Alice Andrini, a woman who lives right down the street. She faithfully retells Klimt's story of death and life, but we chose to put her painting here because of its comparative value. Klimt's golds are beautiful, but are they more beautiful than those in our very own Gertrude's garden? Francis, we're out again. What is it this time? Are the blues more powerful than those in our moonlight walk? Elizabeth and Crimson, I'm right in the middle of the acrylics drying, and I need Elizabeth and Crimson. Are the brushstrokes more complex than those in Girl Passing Her Glass. Well, can't you use another color or mix it? You can't mix Elizabeth and Crimson. Decide for yourself. Compare this to those. Here. Oh, this is incredible. Your language. <laughs> the guests. Oh, fuck off. Um, <laughs> excuse the interruption. Uh, why don't we head back to the blue room and look at the Rundgren paintings again, shall we? I can't buy paint with this. There's a sale going on. No, there's not. I saw the sign in the window. Oh, that? <laughs> That's art sticks. I can't work with a paint called art sticks. I can't. I use Windsor and Newton. I've used Windsor and Newton all my life. It smells like only Windsor and Newton smells. It mixes like only Windsor and Newton mixes. I can use no other kind. And I can't go in there and hand them a change. Happy artist is a good artist. Is that true? I've got the bank deposits ready and the mail. You want me to drop them off while I'm out? Well, that would be great. Did I hear her leave? Yes. Good. OK, everybody, back into the green gallery, where I have definitely managed to save the best for last. Plentitude. Now, Plentitude was not painted by Hockney or Monet, Renoir or Goya. Do the big museums want her? No. Would she command millions at Christie's? Very doubtful. But to me, Plentitude is priceless. She is the very first painting I actually heard speak. Oh, now, 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 before you decide to commit the curator, <laughs> I suppose I should explain myself. She didn't speak to me out loud, no. I heard her in my soul. You see, after my father died, everyone told me that I should shut his museum down. Expenses were high. Nobody wanted to see the work of a bunch of no-named artists. Keeping this museum open was H-A-R-D. A real struggle. They almost had me convinced. But the moment I laid eyes on plentitude, take me, she screamed. Preserve me. Save me for better times, because when I am gone, I am gone forever. But while I am here, I am alive forever. <laughs> alive forever. How could I leave after that? Maybe you will find your plentitude. Go, enjoy, and come back and visit us often. We are so honored to have you here. Almost perfect. It would have been absolutely perfect if she weren't screaming profanities and you weren't over here counting quarters. Nichols. Whatever. 
really friends. It's completely gauche. Just throw in one reference to the donation jar when you give your tour, please. We already charge admission. Three dollars? The other museum charges twelve, and they don't give tours. They don't? No, they have tape narrations on headphones, and those cost another four bucks. Robbery? It's not robbery, it's normal. We're just cheap. They charge for the coat check for the special exhibits, Lillian show. They would charge for that. We should charge Lillian for that. Listen, <laughs> we charge three dollars for everything and have one little donation jar in which I usually find used Kleenex and... Well, what on earth are we supposed to do with yen? <laughs> Look at it like this, it's fascinating. If you live in Japan, will you mention the jar? When are you going to get rid of Lillian? You're changing the subject. She's trouble. She's only here for two more weeks. She's been here for three months. You said you'd let me try something new. Three long months. Get rid of her. Just wait until the opening of her show. When her show opened in Georgia, people waited in line for tickets overnight. She caused a riot. Do you want a riot? Look, Howard, just give her a chance, OK? She's bad news. It's late. Go home. Francis? What? You never smile anymore. What? You should worry less and smile more. You're getting frown lines. Great. <laughs> when I worry, I go look at plentitude. And then all of that bad stuff goes right out the window. You should look more at the paintings and less at the books. <clears throat> oh, gift shop. Do you want me to tell them we're closing? No, I'll get them. Oh, and um, before you leave, will you cover plentitude up? Yes. Don't forget. Lillian will probably be back tonight, and you know how she is when she I, gets an idea. I said I will, Howard. Mention the jar! and crimson. I bought it in case I needed it. I'm not feeling alliterin crimson today, but I don't know what I'll feel more of. Lillian, you cannot smoke in here. People don't like it. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, nobody ever comes in here. It's just you, me, Howard, and all his freaky imaginary friends. <laughs> people are here. Yeah, gift shop people. I'll put it out if they decide to come into the gallery. Put it out now and help me clean. Howard will throw a fit. Maybe. It doesn't quite fit my thing. Good. It's got a cigarette in the middle of it. Don't look at that. Look at the space around it, huh? <laughs> now, what do you see? Lillian, Lillian. Yeah? This isn't the kind of work that's going to draw crowds. So? Well, I need crowds. The museum needs crowds. And you, you can draw crowds. I saw what happened. 
happened in Georgia. And if you, you just want me to do, do what I did in Georgia, well, not exactly. Because I hated me in we'll Georgia. We'll do something else then. Something nice. Nice doesn't draw crowds. Things involving body fluids draw crowds. Oh, you want me to pee on? No. Just draw a crowd. And how many people would you like in your crowd? Look, this is not a joke. I have invited a lot of press to your opening, and press means people, and people means oh, money. Oh, no. We're oh. cleaning it up. I didn't touch your precious planet, too. Oh, thank God. thought about it, though. You touch her, I'll destroy everything you've ever painted. I would never deface a work of art. No, you just deface canvases. It's not done yet. Obviously. What's it called? Vasectomy. Please, Lillian, please. <laughs> Time to get the show on the road. Oh, not this again. Welcome to our early morning tour. Howard, we need to talk. Um, after the tour. I'm running a little late. Um, and if you'll walk this way, we'll begin the tour in the area that we fondly call our red square. Red is the color motif, and square, well, it's all about geometry. So, where were we? On Friday night, the reception will be in here. Beer, wine, cheese. I've called both the newspapers, I've made some calendar listings, and I'll post a banner. Do you want to use this room? Yeah. All of it? Only if I can paint plenitude, chrome green. No! Then I want that space over there. Done. And we'll need a title for the show. Capitalism. <laughs> Does it criticize capitalism? <laughs> this is a very conservative town. Oh, then they'll love capitalism. Who left all of this trash in the blue room? We were strolling through the blue room, a room designed very specifically to be clean and clear, to focus our attention on the horizontal nature of Gertrude's garden, something the space does quite well, I might add. And as I was meditating on how the empty space made the painting even more perfect, I suddenly trip over... Throw it out. Clean up your garbage yourself. Lillian. Smelly sneakers. That one I just made up. Smelly sneakers. I'm currently working with found objects. Those aren't found objects. They're your shoes. You took them off your feet and they stink. That's not art. It's just plain stupid. You know, I think I'll put them up there in front of Plenitude. You will not put that junk in front of Plenitude. Junk to you. Junk to everybody. And who exactly is everybody? But leave me out of this. I have an idea. Let's take a vote, huh? Just you and me and all of the little people on your tour. Really? Seriously. <laughs> all of you people milling out in the blue room. Come on out here. Ooh, tell me when they get here, Howard. They're kind of hard to see. Stop. Do you see them? Help me out, Howard. Is everyone here? Oh. There's nobody here. There was nobody here yesterday. There was nobody here all of last week. You think I don't know that? You do? Of course I do. You think I'm feeble-minded? Well... You well, you act like you see people. You talk to them. I give tours. That's my job. But nobody is listening to you. <laughs> Have you ever been to the other museum? The big one? You know, art isn't dead there. Art isn't dead here, either. Could have fooled me. The people will come back. And when they do, we will be waiting for them with open arms and six galleries full of artwork that was meticulously preserved during their absence. And I won't have forgotten the words to my Blue Room speech. But this is not something that needs to be preserved. Whoa, buddy, we haven't voted yet. All right, let's take a vote. Just you and me. Raise your hand if you think that my found object study is an art. A tie on both means we'll throw it out. You will. I will. Why? Because you've touched me. Ready? Go ahead. Throw it out. Do you mean throw out, throw it out, or don't throw out, throw it out? Throw it out. 
Mm. Smelly sneakers. Tie on both. I guess that's that. You can throw them out. Plenitude. What? Plenitude. Throw it out. You can't throw plenitude out. She's art. She's trash. She is not. Looks like trash to me. I bet you found her in a New York City junkyard. No, I didn't. Oh, come on, Howard. Well, I found her in New York City, Well, you never told me you found her in New York City. Well, I mean, the mission of this museum is to retain art created by members of this community. But she spoke so loud. I mean, she practically screamed, and I was just hoping that people wouldn't... But she certainly was not in the trash. She was outside, in front of an artist's loft, left like a baby on the street, wanting to be loved, waiting to be discovered. She was waiting for the trash pickup. Yep. I hate to break it to you, Howard, but trash pickup in New York isn't like it is here. You put little items like banana peels and trash bags, big items, chairs with broken legs, old refrigerators, junk paintings, those things you set out outside. Someone might come by and pick them up, but it's trash. Marked as trash, picked up by guys in big, smelly trash trucks and crushed into a thousand pieces, just like the rest of the trash. Your painting, my shoes, are the same thing. Don't touch them. You sure? I think I'm gonna go scavenging for new pieces. Maybe a, a rotten tomato, or a piece of old rotten meat. Well, not near the wine and cheese. Meat with maggots crawling all over it. You make me sick. You and your stinky shoes. Smelly sneakers. Whatever. You see that? That is a Robert Byrne Hall. Maybe it's just a sketch. But we were the first place to show his work. We were his start. And you put your crap in front of that. It's disgusting. Well, that was totally unnecessary. But it was fun. Huh? You're throwing it away? Yeah. You didn't think I was going to put that in my show. What? Francis, I found that stuff in the trash. Besides, I need my shoes. But Howard Howard, is you know, every once in a while, someone needs to make Howard think. Oh, you want me to drop that off at the bank while I'm out? And by the way, there were people here last week. Sixteen people. I keep a count. So don't go making things worse than they are. Sorry, sixteen people. Hmm. I'll make sure to get it right the next time somebody asks. sense that she's not here. She's always late. And I can imagine that the newspaper people wouldn't be here on time. They'll just want to snap some pictures once things start going strong. But how would you... Don't eat the cheese. Nobody else is eating it. Nobody else is here yet. Oh, good. Look at person. person who is really good looking. <laughs> Gotta be kidding. Hello. Is this the opening of capitalism? Yes, yes it is. Uh, have some cheese. Have some wine. Sit down. Did I come early? Oh, no, you're right on time. These things always start a little late. Of course, there will be more people. Right now, just a little fashionably late. You ever been here before? No. Do you know how long this thing lasts? No. The name's Guy. Guy Green? <laughs> Not available. That's nice. Is the artist around here somewhere? I wouldn't know. I love artists. They're always so, uh, well, you know. <laughs> There's an exit to your right. Oh. Thanks. This is a gift shop. Go ahead, eat the cheese. Where's that man? I think he left. You let him leave? What did you want me to do? Tie him to a chair? Well, back to nobody. You never get anyone that good looking in here. <laughs> what could be keeping them? I'm glad you didn't try to do that thing with the meat. I was worried about that. It was an interesting concept, but it's really hard to find meat with maggots already in it. You end up having to prep the meat yourself and let the maggots infest. And it doesn't look quite right until at least a few of them turn into flies. I'm really glad you didn't try to do that thing with the meat. There we go. Hello. Yes. 
You do? He is? Why? Oh my god. Oh my god. I'll be right down. Yes. Yes, thank you. Your guest? Howard! I've gotta go pick him up! He's in jail! They arrested him at the other museum. Now don't let them leave when they come! Picasso. We need a Picasso. Picasso doesn't fit our mission statement. Neither does Lillian. Well, Lillian is here to afford the local community the opportunity to observe a nationally known artist. And she develops and progresses through a series of sculptures and paintings inspired by the community itself. I am? Supposedly. We need something big. Something with a name. I really think we should break down and buy a Picasso just to get them in the door. We can't afford a Picasso. A little one, then. Maybe a sketch. <laughs> just as long as it's signed. Nobody may be breaking down the door to get in here, but Lillian was right. Art is not dead at the other museum. You wouldn't believe what I saw there, Francis. Hundreds of people waiting in line, waving $20 bills. And they have a, a snack bar there, just like at, at one of those places, you know, where they have the rides and they sell overpriced pizza. The amusement park. Yes. And they have a restaurant that you can't even get into without reservations. The place is so huge, people don't stop to look at anything. There's too much to see. So they just skim the work like they're on some kind of assembly line with these headphones on, listening to some kind of piped-in narration, and I couldn't help myself. I mean, what if these people had questions? There was no one there to facilitate discussion. What if somebody wanted to know why Clay used all those heavy black lines? What if there was something really great that needed to be known about a painting and the tape just didn't happen to stop there? I couldn't stand it. I tell stories for the art, that's what I do. So I told those people to throw down their headphones and to follow me. And they did. And I took them by the paintings and I talked about art and they talked back. They asked me questions. They laughed at my jokes. And when I finished with one group, I'd go find another one. And when I got back to the start to give the tour a second time, I'd see people from the first group still standing there, still looking at the paintings where I'd left them. I stopped the assembly line. I did that. And then I went back to the front and asked all the people why they were there. A Picasso exhibit, they said. The largest Picasso exhibit in the country. And I told them that we didn't have the largest Picasso exhibit in the country, but we had something better. Art created by members of this very community, chosen for its beauty, for how it represented us. And at our museum, we didn't give tours on tape. We had the real thing, run by real people for only $3. And maybe they couldn't get a pizza at our museum, but there was a restaurant down the street. And at our museum, they could talk to Lillian, a real artist, and ask questions and linger. And they were going to come, Francis. They were ready to put their money back in their pockets and follow me. So what happened? Security called the police. The police said I was a lunatic, put me in handcuffs, and the people all got irritated. They lost their place in line. All of that for nothing. And I missed the opening. Don't worry, nobody else showed up either. Nobody? Well, one person came, but Nobody. Wow. I really think we should get a Picasso. We can't. We'll reschedule and try again. For another opening that nobody comes to. Well, maybe somebody would have come if I could have spread a little buzz about whatever it was you were planning on doing tonight. What were you planning on doing tonight? Blowing up the building? All I asked for was one tiny little preview, a photo for the paper, something, anything. You want to see my work? I would love to see your work. All right. Sit down. I'll show you my work. Capitalism. <laughs> and what, pray tell, is interesting about capitalism? Nothing. Goods for cash. You are what you earn, it's worth what it makes. You know, 
a dollar grows into two, two grows into four, four grows into eight if you've got a good investment plan, or it grows into 7,564 if you've got options. You know, made just like the floats in the Rose Bowl Parade. You know, 7,425,298 carnations, 8,242,290 rose petals, 76 eager volunteers, and one lovely beauty queen. Voila, capitalism. 125 20s, 116 tens, 662 ones, 16 quarters, 80 nickels, 30 dimes, and one gloriously, fabulously shredded $100 bill. Money. Yeah. You ripped it up. Cool, huh? Not cool. That's real money? You told me to do what I did in Atlanta. You did not rip up money in Atlanta. No, I peed on the floor in the middle of a performance art piece. And I've got to tell you, it's not easy to pee on the floor in front of people or socialized against it. It's actually very difficult to make Just come out. stop! And I'm telling you, with money, it's exactly the same. You're socialized against ripping it up. I mean, have you ever ripped up cash before? I haven't. It's the weirdest feeling. You're sitting there, holding this dollar bill in your hand, and you're thinking of everything you can buy with it. Bread, food, clothing, trips to Tahiti. And it's really, really, really difficult to tear that first one in two. I mean, your body just won't let you. Then after you've done about 30, it all starts to look like paper. Hey, you're screwing that up stuff is hard. real. Francis, you're totally oh, get your hands off. How much did you say was in here? 4,700. No, don't tell me. I don't want to know. We could have put this money to really good use. You know how hard I work to keep this place afloat. Sweep the floors, write the grants, pay the bills, man the gi Oh, Jesus. What? Oh, Jesus. Francis, what? A deposit slip. Yeah, I put a couple of those in there, too. It needed a little color. Please don't tell me. Please don't. All that time you were helping me out, mailing the bills, doing the deposits when I worked late night. You let her take the deposits to the bank? I did mail the bills. Lillian, that was everything we had. I mean, that was it. Out. Francis, the whole is worth more than the sum of it. That's oh, ours? Help me, Howard. You see there's a hundred in here? Actually, a couple. This is our money. Yes. I, well, I got an ear. Washington's or Hamilton's? How can you tell the difference? Oh, we should start different files for each president. <laughs> Do you think this hair or this hair belongs to Lincoln? Well, what was I thinking? Letting you take the deposit. What were you thinking? I don't know! Okay, the first time was when I had a grant proposal deadline and I just couldn't leave. And the bank is next to the post office and the post office is next to the art supply and the art... I am so busy and... And she offered! I didn't always offer. Sometimes you ask. Lillian! Sorry, but it's true. I know how to make it back. Go away, Lillian! Go away and find somewhere else to destroy for the next two weeks! You are such a fraud. Fine. Be that way. <sighs> Sorry, I offered. Don't come back. Can't believe you let her make the deposits. I know, I know. I could just shoot myself. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> we'll make it work. <laughs> look, look, they're kind of coming together. She had such an amazing resume. Can you believe it? Just comes in here, steals our money, and waltzes out. In an hour, she'll be back, begging for our forgiveness. Oh, Lillian doesn't beg. She'll have to. She has nowhere else to go. <gasps> She'll get another show at some other little podunk place in the mountains, somewhere pretty and relaxing, probably. They'll feed her and nurture her and give her overpriced Windsor and Newton all whatever paint, which she'll never use instead. She'll make something called abortion, using real placenta for no reason at all. <laughs> Disenfranchise the whole community, waltz on to the next place, and remember that glorious summer she had working with a real fetus. Meanwhile, the poor little museum will be dead. She'll be back, I promise. And when she comes back with some sob story, you've got to be strong. She is not going to come back! Just wait. She's homeless. She is not homeless. Yes, she is. <laughs> when I get here in the mornings before you do, she's always here. She lives inside of Rocket? I think so. <laughs> oh, Howard. Oh, don't even think about it. Well, we can't leave her out there alone. Yes, we can. She'll survive, I promise. We've got work to do. I feel like one of those fairy tale girls with an impossible task. You know, spin the straw into gold, name the guy with a completely non-human name. I'm not Howard. I know. How'd you know it's me? I sent Howard home. Besides that, you left her things in Rocket. I'm sorry. Okay, we'll put them over there. No, I'm sorry about earlier tonight. Uh, me too. 
$4,732. We're overdue on our last shipment of merchandise to the gift shop. We evidently didn't pay utilities last month, and I don't know where we're going to find the cash to pay them this month. It's my fault, though, letting you do Where something that you never should... Counterfeiting supplies. I can make as much money as you want. Counterfeit? It looks real. It's not real. Ah, but what makes something real? Being minted by the U.S. government makes it real. Otherwise, it's a felony. You can't counterfeit money. I can. When I first started thinking about how I was going to approach capitalism, I wasn't planning on using your money. I was planning on making my own. It was almost perfect. The money looked like real money, felt like real money, smelled like real money. But the only problem was that it wasn't real money. And I really wanted real money. But, you know, I feel awful about how everything's turned out, and I thought with a little reverse engineering, no, I'll just make the exact amount of money that I used in capitalism. So it won't be like creating new money, it'll be like replacing old money. If we get caught, we'll show them capitalism and tell them that we were replacing the money that we tore up. Forget it! Look, we'll tell them that we spent the fake money and shredded the real money. Absolutely not. I'll take the money to the bank myself and deposit it. No, neither you nor Howard have to know anything about it at all. Lillian! All right. You don't say I didn't offer. There's got to be some way out of this. There it is. Some other way. You're going to try to put this money back together? You tore it up pretty well. I did, didn't I? Yes, you did. Well, if you're not going to use it for anything, it sure would be a shame to ruin a perfectly good sculpture. You shouldn't be here, you know. Howard told me to make sure you never came back. Sure. For good reason. Yeah, I guess. Another week and nowhere to paint. Well, I shouldn't let you stay. Yeah, I know. But you will, right? Nowhere to paint or to live. Well, you have to find somewhere else to live. But you can paint. Thanks. But only when I'm here, only at night, and Howard can't know. All right. We most certainly have not been late before. Well, it must have crossed in the mail. May I speak to your manager, please? I said I would like to speak to you. Hello? Hello? You sounded great. But it didn't work. I like the place much better with Lillian not here. It's quieter and safer, too. She was not good for us, not at all. She scared all the guests away. Which guests? The ones that were here before she scared them away. So what did you tell her when she came back last night? <laughs> she hasn't been back? Yes, yeah, she has. No, Her she... things are gone. Oh. You let her back in here. Francis. All right, I let her back in, just to get her things. Why didn't you tell me? I don't know what we're going to do. Nobody is giving us any slack, not the phone company, not the supplies. Francis, house. you can't let her back in here. Never, ever again. Promise me you won't. People. We got two donations today from my capital campaign. Oh, you want me to take them to the bank? <laughs> Just joking. Fifty-six dollars. It wasn't always like this, you know. Before the other museum came, we were really successful. We were the ones with the parties and the patrons and, God, they used to give us so much money back then. Now I can't sell a membership to save my life. Fifty-six dollars. So depressing. So, why are you still here? What do you mean? If you don't like it, leave. I can't do that. Somebody's got to take care of things. Let Howard do it. You think Howard can take care of things by himself? He can't even flip on a light switch. And then there's the gift shop. Howard can't run a cash register. So? Well, people need prints. And I believe in the mission. There is no other museum in this city that preserves creative work by completely unknown artists. If we weren't here, what would happen to it? Someone's got to preserve this art. You need to get a life. It's going to change your whole outlook on the world. Thanks. And I remember museums as a kid. 
It was you and this painting in this glorious place. And of course, there were also 20,000 security guards who never smiled, and if you got too close to a painting, they would descend on you. Don't touch this. Don't lean on that. Sometimes, before we open, I come in early and just stand and look at the paintings all by myself. Sometimes I touch them. When you touch a painting, it's as if just for a moment, you're part of something extraordinary. Something there aren't even words for. You ever touch a Van Gogh? No. <clears throat> well, me neither. <laughs> Too many gods around me. But I've touched plentitude. Don't tell Howard, though, he'd freak. It's nice the way dry paint feels. Oil and acrylic and watercolor, or the way chalk feels on paper, the different kinds of brush strokes. I love art. Mm. I wouldn't have minded being an artist myself. Of course, that takes talent. But I can write a grant proposal. $56. Today, I brought in $56. And that's a good day. And somebody's got to do it. Got to be counterfeit, Bob. I said no. <laughs> What's that for? Lillian. Stop whining. Feels much better wet than dry. Jesus, Lillian. You can get it everywhere. Relax. You want to try? No. Okay. It's really messy. Yeah. And it would stain. <laughs> I bet you were one of those kids in elementary school who wouldn't finger paint because they'd get their pretty dresses all fucked up. I wasn't. Okay, I was. What about it? No, really. It's just paint. You scared? No. Prove it. <laughs> Lillian! Not on canvas! I know what canvas costs! Drag. I mess! Loosen your hand. I've ruined it. Wiggle your fingers. Yeah. It feels... Gushy. Yeah. I wish we had another canvas. <clears throat> Not that one, that's yours. Yeah, I never liked it anyways. Don't! We have more! I'll get another one. Well, look at that. I didn't know. I was rationing. Hmm. Go for it. It's empty. So fill it. But shut up and paint. <sighs> Nothing I do ever looks right. Don't look at it. Feel it. Put your body into it. It's physical. To have a lifetime of this would be incredible. Yeah, there's no such thing as a lifetime of this. Yeah, but wouldn't it be great if there were? I want what to... you want? Just to be happy for once. To have the chips fall my way. To live dangerously. To tell people off when they bug me and to do what I want to do when I want to do it. To win a million dollars and not give half of it to Howard or to charity. To not care so much, not always have to be the responsible one and feel so guilty when I screw up, <laughs> to be free. Oh, God, this feels so... <laughs> it is so ugly. <laughs> so hideously ugly. Nothing I do ever works right. Nothing ever. Not at all. Oh, wow. Oh, I really wrote it now. Ooh, 
it's kind of cool. How'd you get that color? And the hole punching is intense, so it says something. It says, and I still haven't dealt with the bills, and I still haven't figured out what to do about it. Oh, I can't think anymore. Let's get out of here. It'd be kind of cool to paint with a different color and then punch a hole in that. Or if you cut a hole with a butter knife, or if you paint it on silk and then I want to go home. Would you have me another canvas and another kind of blue? There is another kind of blue, right? I can't leave you here alone. You're not supposed to be here at all. I promised Howard. I looked him right in the eyes. Look at what I promised. Yes, there's blue. You want red, too, for purple? I got to make sure to be gone before Howard gets in. And whatever you do, no knives. Please. Oh. Maybe knives. I haven't decided yet. Oh my God! <laughs> Plenitude! Oh please, oh please, oh please, oh please, oh please, oh please. Oh thank God. Lillian! Howard! Caught in the act! Act of what? First you destroy the money and then you ruin the museum. You're messing up my installation. Hey Howard, I think I know what we can do. I think that, oh my God! Look who we have here. I see. Destroying the museum. I see. Was she content to destroy the money? Oh no, not Lillian. She had to break in here in the middle of the night to destroy the artwork too. I need coffee. Gift shop. I hear it. You ruin everything. So sue me. What good would that do? <laughs> what are you doing? Keep still. I will be back after I catalog your destruction. $17.64. That ought to help us out a little. Oh my god. There's nothing in there. Yes, I know. I guess I was just hoping. You used everything we had. This was mine. Everything! It's about destruction. Your life is about destruction! You promised me that you wouldn't let Howard I'm sorry, see you here. I couldn't, I couldn't it. help it. Really lame excuse, Lillian. Yeah, I guess. Thanks for ruining everything. Last night, I went home after I left here, and I couldn't keep from thinking about that moment when it felt good. When my hands were in the paint and I wasn't looking down and everything was effortless. I couldn't get my mind off it. That's the best part. I started getting amazing ideas all whirring around in my head, and then something snapped, and I thought the strangest thing what would Lillian do? Lillian would leave. Everything back there seems to be in order. Apparently the vandal didn't make it out of the green gallery. I didn't vandalize your museum. Learn to tie a square knot. Hold her. What? Keep her here. I'm calling the police. Oh, Howard. Well, she's stolen here in the she middle didn't of the steal night. It she anyway. did, she did. She was here Howard while I got here. Last night. Francis. I'm sorry. You promised. I know. I didn't know you'd use everything. Yes, you did. <laughs> Yesterday, the answers to everything just came pouring into my head. They did. Just listen. Now, the gift shop does really well, right? Yes. And no artist sells inexpensive art. And inexpensive art would probably sell really well. Why buy a print when you can buy a painting? And to let people actually buy real art would bring them even closer to it than they are now, right? So I thought that if she just painted a few things, no. just let me finish, she wouldn't stay for long, just for a little while. She could paint, and I could watch her, maybe get her to teach me a thing or two. And then, when she was gone, I could take over and, and paint things to sell in the gift shop. She can't stay. And you're no artist. End of discussion. How there are no buts. Do you think she could actually paint something someone would want to buy? Maybe. Because she can't. Nobody wants this stuff. Francis, this has got a hole in the middle of it. It isn't good for anything. Get that off your head. Would you buy this? Excuse me? Um, Hello. Uh, you've got a lovely space here. Uh, uh, sorry about the mess. 
We are housing a working artist at the moment. It's exciting, really. You never know what you're going to walk in and find the next morning. It's about destruction. Oh. <laughs> yeah, feel free to wander about the galleries. Um, the early morning tour won't start for four minutes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one who is here for your opening. A real tour. <laughs> what did you do with my badge, you thief? Get her out of here. Get this mess cleaned up before somebody trips over it. The last thing we need is a lawsuit. Oh, one person comes in and he thinks he's working at the Louvre. You like it? I'm not talking to you. You should ask him out. I don't know him. His name is Guy. And trust me, he's available. You've got to get out of here. I'm going. You know, he hit on me the other day. And then when I told him I wasn't interested, he went on and on about how he wanted to meet the resident artist. Said he was in love with artists. First me, then her. Lillian, you are the resident artist. Yeah, but he still he doesn't know that. He still doesn't. For all he knows, it could be you. Get out! Come on! Come on, huh? You play me and... I'll play you. If you play me, that means you have to come in at 8 in the morning. Write the grants, pay the bills, and man the gift shop. Oh, forget that then. It's forgotten. I'll get that. Well, move quicker. Howard should be back any minute. You know, last night I thought you were kind of cool. But today it's back to Howard's little employee of the month. I could have guessed. You are so chicken. I thought you wanted to live life dangerously. Lillian! What do you think? Great gift shop. Have you ever thought about selling furniture? It's a hot ticket right now. I don't think we have. Have we ever thought about selling furniture? Well, there's not enough room. I remember you from the other night. Guy Green. Yes, and I remember you. I'm... Chicken. Lillian. <clears throat> I'm the resident artist. Francis? Cool. Francis! Uh, Francis isn't here right now. So sorry you couldn't have stayed for my show. Uh, I really wish I could have. I love artists. Mm. They have such a soul. Mm. And you look just like I pictured you would. Really? I'd love to have a cup of coffee sometime, talk about the show I missed. We should do it! Francis! Uh, shouting won't help. She's trying to tell you that Francis is gone. I know I've told you this before, but I think your work is fascinating. And you were here the other night, too. Yes, I was. I love this place. Come here all the time. <laughs> I'm here for the early morning tour. You are. How long till it starts? We're starting a little late today. Um, Francis. Uh, uh, I said she's not here. I think she went out to run some errands. She did? That's what she said she was going to do. She should have told me. I'll make sure to let her know. Tour tour. I want to have oh, a tour. Give the tour yourself. <laughs> uh, she's always here. She's heard the tour a million times. No joke. Lillian. Yes? Nothing. It is time for the tour, Howard. Very well, <laughs> Lillian. Uh, if you walk this way, we'll begin the tour in the area that we fondly call our red square. Red is the color motif, and square, well, it's all about geometry. Don't screw with that one, I'm gone. Wait, I'm coming too. <laughs> I told you not to screw with that. I'm an artist, remember? Well, make your own work. Tour over? No, but Howard's flustered. He keeps forgetting the words to his speech. It's a trip. He wants to have coffee. He likes you. Now he likes Lillian. Think that all I am is Howard's little employee of the month? No, I don't think that's all you are. I think that's what you act like. Well, I want to be more. So do it. Well, I'll be over when he finds out I'm not you. No, it won't. Francis, that guy would hit on a chair. Look. <laughs> Once you've reeled him in, tell him you're you, that this was all a joke, he'll get a kick out of it. Think it's creative. You think he would hit on a chair? No, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Francis. He said he liked you, right? That you look just like he thought you would. Well... Look, you want to impress Guy? I'll teach you all you need to know about my work if you let me paint here at night. Oh no, you blew that! And I promised Howard! And a good employee never breaks her promises, right? And don't teach me about painting? Well, I don't know how I could do that. There's no paint left, no canvas. Buy more. 
With what? We've got two donations. That's $56. And there's the gift shop money. No, no, don't take the gift shop money. Just the donations. Your donation money. Mm -hmm. A good employee would want to pay the debt first, wouldn't Just she? Just take it. Yes, sir. Howard's coming, so get out of here. And don't come back any early of the nine. Howard can't know you're staying here. And this time, I mean, he really can't know. All right, don't screw with my paintings while I'm gone. I won't. Well, he's gone. Hmm. What on earth are you doing? Try and figure out how to pay the bills. Not that. Not that. This. This charade. You mean becoming Lillian? Yes. Becoming Lillian. Well, we were just playing. And I'm out here having a heart attack. Well, you don't have to worry. Lillian's gone, I'm back. Where did she go? She left. For good? She's gone, Howard. I couldn't let her stay after that fiasco. Which one? I'm sorry. I don't know what else I can say. What is wrong with you? Why could you even want to pretend to be her? We were just playing a game. It wasn't funny! You got me all flustered. I told him that Yellow Bird was painted by Dorothy Rogers instead of Danny Rundgren. <laughs> and that girl passing her glass was girl passing her gas. You did it. I wasn't focused. I kept thinking about you trying to figure out what on earth has possessed your brain, and he kept asking about Lillian, wanting to see Lillian's work, and what was I supposed to tell him? Lillian's work consists of a sculpture she made out of money that she stole from us and a pair of her own tennis shoes. Well, you could have shown him this. He's already seen that. Francis, this is not a playground! This is my father's museum. It has been in my family for three generations. We cannot let it fall apart. Please, Francis, no more Lillian, all right? No more Lillian. Good. I hate unpleasantries. I really do. And you hate them too, don't you? <laughs> Howard? Yes? He's got a lot of money. Who? Guy Green. Did you get a look at his shoes? Next time he comes, I'll get a check from him. A big check, big enough to pay for last month's bills. If there is a next time. Girl passing her gas. What kind of idiot would name a painting that? I tried to pretend like I didn't say it wrong. I didn't apologize. I just kept right on going like I delivered the line perfectly, hoping he wouldn't notice. <laughs> My father is probably looking down at us right now, shaking his head. Guy will come again. He said he wanted to have coffee. Oh, that's right. Coffee with Lillian. What do you think he's going to do when he finds out you're not Lillian? Maybe we won't tell him for a while. I finally get rid of her, and now you want to be her. Everywhere I go, her name rings in my ears. Lillian. Lillian. It's just for a little while, until we get that check. Then I'll come clean, I promise. It doesn't feel like it felt before. I keep trying to make it feel the same, and it just doesn't. It's the same kind of pain. I mean the free feeling, the I can conquer the world feeling. It doesn't always feel like that. It doesn't look like anything, just a great big mess. Francis, it's not magic. You have to look at it, decide what you want. It's so easy for you. You decide what you want, and you make it. I can't draw. I've had years of practice. I know. I want that feeling again. I'm going to make that feeling happen again if it kills me. <laughs> Big, ugly mess. Help me make it work. You said you would. The light is the most important thing. Like this. Light illuminates what you want seen. Hides what you don't. 
If you look at something under a certain light, it looks totally different than when the light is absent or shining from a different angle like this. That's what's wrong with plenitude. Too much light. See the way the light falls on the gold? Too straight on. And the absence of darkness doesn't allow for subtlety. I struggled with that. Couldn't figure out why the whole thing was so obvious. So disgusted with myself, I threw the whole thing in the trash. Didn't work again for months. You painted plentitude? Now I know how to make it work. See, this part here needs darkening. Real dark. And this needs to be rosier. No. Yeah, Howard would know I've been here. Yes. You painted plentitude. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. You know, it's nice that it says something to someone. <laughs> it's a strange feeling to stumble across something you thought was hopeless and to find out somebody thinks it matters. Shouldn't surprise me. My favorite sculpture is a Pieta that Michelangelo fractured the arm on. That fractured arm is what speaks most to me. I would have been pissed off if he later went back and fixed it. So even though I know how to solve that painting's problem, even though I get the urge to every single day, I'd never actually do it. I'd never do it to Howard. Well, because Michelangelo never did it to me. You painted plentitude. Don't tell Howard what you think you know. Sometimes people need illusions. comes in, we're open. Come on in. You mind uh, turning on the lights? Oh, <laughs> sorry. I always forget to do that. I don't have much use for them until people start arriving. If um, you're here to see Lillian, she hasn't come in yet. I'm not here to see Lillian. You're not? No, I'm here to see you. Oh, um, well then, uh, what can I do for you? That's not the question. What? The question is, what can I do for you? I don't know what you mean. You've got a nice place here. Yes. Some really uh, stunning work. Oh, come take a look at our newest acquisition. Pandora's box. Isn't she amazing? All of those big, big emotions compressed into... Not many people, though. They come in waves. I see. And, big... and how does that affect your long-term financial projections? You plan the best and worst case scenario? You'd have to ask Francis that. Francis isn't here right now. It's incredibly powerful. Look, I've got a lot of money, Howard. Well, then write us a check. We could use a check. <laughs> I didn't mean to acquire Pandora's box. I was actually going to uh, meet this buyer of a Picasso that I liked. I was going to get him to loan it to us, but there were so many people standing around the Picasso, and Pandora's box was off in the corner, and nobody was I'd like to do more than donate. Howard, put that down and listen to me. When does your lease come up for renewal? A couple of months. So it's about time for a new one to arrive. Yes. But it hasn't arrived yet, has it? Oh, I don't know. Don't bother looking. It's not coming. You won't be receiving a new lease. The city doesn't want to be in the landlord business anymore. They want to sell this building. <laughs> they wouldn't do that. This museum has been in my family for three generations. And the real estate people didn't start talking about these streets being paved with gold until two years ago. Now, there's a clause in your lease that allows you to purchase this building for $100,000. You should take them up on it. If you don't, they're going to auction it off to the highest bidder. I haven't even decided yet where I want to hang Pandora's box. At this point, you might as well get ready to hang her out in the street. Now, once word about the auction gets out, a lot of people are going to be calling you. They're going to call because they want to buy this building at your price. Don't listen to them. They want to tear it down and put up a gap. Now, I, on the other hand, love art. Howard, I love art. I actually want to buy into the museum business. This is not a business. It should be. But don't you care? Of course I care. I mean, do you really care about it? Because it doesn't seem... Don't tell me what I care about. I know every detail about every one of these paintings. 
I know why they're here, why we chose them. I know every style, every brushstroke, every piece of information about the artists' lives. I can give the tour in six languages. Well, most people who come in here speak English, but I learned it in six languages because it is important to me to be able to communicate with whoever walks through those doors. That's great. Howard, really, that's great. Of course, you caring doesn't matter much if you don't have $100,000. Now listen, I can help you. I had my lawyer draw up a preliminary contract. You let me buy the building at your price, it becomes my building. But I promise you that my building will always house your museum. Always. Of course, in order to do that, we're going to have to be a little more businesslike here. We're not charging more. That's okay, I'll get that written into the contract. In fact, if you'd like, I'll get it written in that admission into the museum will always be free. Why? From a business perspective? <laughs> because it's a good draw. We pump up the gift shop, which is already doing pretty well. We lease off a little of the space, just a little, and we've got free admission. I'd have to talk to Frances first. Mm. Are you sure you want to do that? She's obviously inept. She's never here. She doesn't know her job. Even if she has the best intentions in the world, she's not helping you. I'll give up. Look. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. I've been looking for things. What are you looking for? The lease. Why? Because I want it. Here. Next time, just ask for it. I can't when you're late. Well, this is the first time I've been late in forever. I know. And I need our budget and our uh, best and worst case scenarios. Our best and worst what? And the, the lease, the new one for next year. Has it come yet? No. Are you sure? Has the city called? Oh, and Francis, these phone messages are old. I know that. And I need our new lease. It hasn't come yet. But it's time. It should be here by now. It's probably stuck in the mail. I'll call and check on it. Give me those. Phone company called. I'll get on it. Power and light called, too. Thank you. Aren't you going to call them? In a minute. Guy was just here. He was? Yes. I can't believe I missed him. What are you doing? I just want you to remember what we're here for. You'll ruin it. Put it back. And I'd like to learn more about what you do. I'd like to know how we work. Well, I can't just teach you. I'd like that. you to try. Have I ever steered you wrong? I mean, really wrong. I know we're a little off track right now, but we'll get back on it again. Howard, don't look at me like that. I have freely given every waking moment to you and your museum. I don't go out after work and have drinks and dinner like other people my age do. No, I work, I stay late. I worry when I'm not here. I am always putting out one fire after another, and I have never seen so many fires. <laughs> but don't forget that I did get you fiscally stable in the first place, and I'll get us back again. Just got to be a little understanding. Now, would you get that thing off my desk? I want you to see it. I see it! I see it! Did I tell you that yesterday we got $72 worth of donations in the mail? We did. I sent out a letter. It's getting response. You start getting a little more response and I'll be able to relax again and things will go back to the way they've always been. I'm committed. 100% committed. I promise. Hi. 
didn't mean to scare you, the door was open. It was? Uh, don't look at the blue glob in the middle. Look at the space around it. How interesting. It's not finished yet. Of course. I didn't mean to disturb you. Do you mind if I watch? For the museum, I thought it might look nice in here. You bought us a chair. No, I have a friend who manufactures them. Oh. I thought you needed something in here to uh, hip the place up a little. Well, that's nice. Nice. This is one cool chair. Now this is art. Well. It is. Pure sculpture. Look. The back, those curves. Now this is a very cool chair. Mm -hmm. And I think you should put it right over here. See, great juxtaposition. See the chair, the shape of the chair under that painting? The yellow in the painting really makes the orange in the chair pop. It does. Hmm, you should definitely put it there. Well, everything in the green room is supposed to be green. The desk isn't green. No. The telephone isn't green. Do you want me to buy you a green phone? I, well, uh, just leave the chair there. I'll ask Howard about it and it's really kind of late. And late is the best time to be in a museum. You know, you guys should really think about staying open late at night, even if it's just one night a week. See, people love to go to the museum at night. They can't go during the day, they've got work. And there's something really sexy about night and a good glass of wine and art. Do you ever think about getting a chamber orchestra? We can't afford a chamber orchestra. I can. Well, thanks for the chair. I'll show it to Howard. The other museum has a pianist on Friday nights. We have a completely different mission, our own way of doing things. We're older. Too old. Stuffy. Not much fun. <laughs> you know, I really wish I could make Howard see. Perhaps you can. See what? Oh, come on. You can't fool me. You're an artist. You know how things work. Life is a progression. Time morphs. Once you're no longer ahead of the curve, you're over, and once you're over, you're dead, just like that. See, standing still is a dangerous thing. You've got to get through to him, get him in tune with the times. Don't be afraid to step on his toes a little, the guy needs it. This place is dead. Well, we're preserving the work of the community for the future, so we'll not- Blah, 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 I've heard it all before. You know how many times Howard gives that spiel on his 30-minute tour? Seven. I counted six. He was nervous. Ugh, so much is wrong with this place, it drives me crazy. You guys should mix the colors up more and get rid of these ornate frames or stodgy. People like clean lines. And these ropes? What are you doing with these ropes? This whole place, it's depressing, yuck. Well, those ropes protect the painting. No, climate control protects paintings. You should get some of that. Look, you tell Howard if he wants me to. I'll come in here, I'll help him get his museum a little more modern. Show off his strengths for God's sake. I mean, you've got a hopping gift shop, some uh, really nice stuff, I guess. Though, this, I'm not so sure about. The best real estate in the city. Now, why you guys aren't a little more concerned about the auction, I'd really like to find what out. What auction? You don't know about the auction? I'm just here to paint. The city isn't going to re renew your lease. If Howard wants to buy them out, all he has to do is pay them $100,000. Otherwise, it goes to auction. $100,000? It's a sweet deal. So I could definitely be persuaded to go into the museum business with him. You know anything about marketing? Uh, Here's the basic rule of marketing. You get people in on the lure. Okay, let's say the museum is our lure, and then you push products right in front of people, products that maybe they didn't even know they needed. Right there, in front of their eyes. And they're hungry because they just finished looking at all these beautiful paintings that they can't buy, wishing they could hang something beautiful over their credenza, and they're hungry for something affordable. And they look down and, oh, there it is. A chair. A museum quality chair at a price they can afford. It's really expensive. Okay, so they look at the chair. Ooh, can't afford it. They're even hungrier, so they buy a, uh, a cool looking bottle of tap water. That costs, say, 10 bucks. $9 profit for us, a little bottle on the shelf for them, and they can say they bought it at a museum. $100,000? Surely that can't. Lillian! Have you seen any mail from the city? Lillian? Yes? I thought you said you were Lillian. I am. Um, I was. 
Jigs up! What? It's your fault. She's Lillian. I'm Francis. Why did you say you were Lillian? It was a kind of a game. <laughs> oh. Well, it looks like I was talking to the right person all along. Pleased to meet you, Francis. Very pleased. Try to get Howard to come to his senses. So, the love connection didn't work out. Oh, cool chair. Well, it makes the blue tones in the painting pop. You guys should add more color to this room. Lillian. Yeah. Please tell me that you didn't tear up any big official looking letters from the city when you tore up all our money. Okay. You did it. Are you sure? Of course I'm not sure. I didn't read your mail, I just used it. You start ripping on my work again, I will have to kill you. If there was a letter from the city, I need to find it. It took me forever to put it back together. Well, what am I going to do now? I vote for painting. Oh, God, and I thought we were in trouble when we were a couple thousand dollars short. You were. Well, now we need a hundred thousand more. No shit. How am I going to tell Howard? Wait, do you think he knows? He was looking for it? No, no, no. He couldn't know. He just couldn't. It would kill him. I can't tell him. Every day, everything just gets worse and worse. I don't even want to wake up anymore. Quit painting and help me! I don't have that kind of money. But you can make it. Your counterfeiting supplies are still in the cabinet. Oh no. Oh yes! If we don't come up with it, we lose the building. And I am not going to let us lose the building. Howard is going to come in in the morning, and I'm going to tell him that there was a problem, but that for once in my life, I have solved it. You want me to counterfeit $100,000? No. Good. I want you to counterfeit $104,732. You said you would. Not that much I didn't. Come on, this is really important. No, $4,000 is a joke. $100,000 will get me sent to jail. The jail might be interesting. No, no way am I taking responsibility for that. I thought you said you were good. I am. Then no one will know. Look, you don't have to take responsibility for it. I will. Please. I'm not going to say that I spent the fake money and shredded the real money. I'm not going to say that you didn't know about it, and I definitely won't take it to the bank. All right. Are you out of your mind? Maybe, but there's no other choice. Oh, this is fucked. Let's get started. What do we do? Are you sure you want to do this? I have to. First, put your hands on the tray. Okay. Good. Rub them all over it. <laughs> What's this do? Gets your fingerprints on the equipment. Oh. <laughs> hey, it's your thing. I'm just topping out. <laughs> If this isn't living dangerously, I don't know what is. Francis? Yes? You can take your hands off the tray now. Oh. Okay, now, making the money is easy. It's making the paper that's hard. First, you have to mix the ink. Like this? No. Oh. It has to be perfect. Here, watch. What denomination are we going to use? Twenties. Any bigger than that and we're bound to get caught. That's... Uh, over 5,000. That's a lot. Yeah, it's going to be a long night. Lillian? Uh-huh. I'm going to miss you. I mean, I probably shouldn't tell you that, and I could kill you for capitalism. These nights have been kind of fun. Look at us. Look at me. Can you believe I'm here doing this with you? Is this living on the edge of what? I mean, I, straight lace, totally boring, follow the rules, me, is counterfeiting money. I'm counterfeiting money. You're supposed to be watching so you can do the next batch. Pay attention. It's so effortless. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. Francis? I'm paying attention. Nothing in life is effortless. So it's not effortless, but it's way more fun than a telemarketing campaign. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. No, don't stop. I'm really liking the way this feels. I've had enough fun for one night. You do the next batch. Well, I can't do it without you. Try it. Not bad. Just a few more drops. I'm glad you're here. Howard should be here soon. Don't rush me. If I screw up the cut, we'll have to do another page. It's amazing how they come out so perfectly. Come look at this. I should be leaving. You can't. What, you want Howard to find me here? I hope he's late so we can finish. I could put it in a box, wrap it like it's a present, give it to him like it's his birthday. Yeah, we're putting this stuff up. No, don't! You can finish it later. Do you realize that this solves my fundraising problems forever? I mean, this is a skill. What is wrong with you? Nothing! For once in my life, I am actually having a really good time! Good morning. Oh. 
What are you doing? What is she doing here? Uh, I've got bad news and good news. I can see the bad news. What's the good news? Uh, What's that chair doing here? The guy brought it. It's not green. Okay, bad news first. We've got money problems. That's not news. Well, the extent is greater than you think. But the good news is... We've got money! Did you rob a bank? We made it! Ourselves! What? Doesn't it look great? Well, yeah. It's really real, huh? It does look really real. And we need it. Howard, the city wants to sell the building. I know. And now we have the... you know? Of course I know. You think people haven't been calling me? Everybody wants this building. Well, why didn't you tell me? Why would I? Because I'm the administrator and because... Francis, stop. Look at what you're doing. I am making us money. I am going to put us in the black. Now we can buy the building. Francis, stop. I'm doing it all for you and for them. You think so? Yes. I stayed up all night participating in an illegal activity, risking my life for... Well, you went insane. And she did go insane. You, shut up. <laughs> did you think we could spend this money? Were you going to go into money laundering next? It's not like spending one fake bill at the grocery store. Are you going to lug the box into the bank? You think they wouldn't check it out? I never ever made this much money before. Not even during our best times. And it looks good. But it's not real. I worked all night. We can't spend it. We can't, can we? No. So what do we do? Go back to the drawing board? Script? Save? Copy on both sides of the paper? Write grand proposals that don't go anywhere? Hold openings for people who don't come? I can't take it anymore! Where are you going? I told you I got a gig in Montana. Well, I thought you had a couple of days left. Yeah, I did. Look, Francis, you are really freaking me out. But you haven't finished teaching me how to paint. Watch the happy painter guy on public television. But Lillian! Look, if you want to paint, paint. If you want to play, play. If you want to work, work. Do what you want to do, but I can't help you. Oh, you're leaving just like that? As fast as I can. But we're friends. You said that... Oh, I don't know what you thought I said. But whatever it is you thought I said, I, I didn't say it. Francis, I don't have friends. I have work. All the rest just becomes baggage. But... but destroying the money is definitely a good idea. You get busted in a second. Well... Bye. Lillian? Just like that? Let her go. But just like that? Would you listen to me for once? It looks good. <laughs> she taught me how, but I made it. They even have different serial numbers and everything. Are you sure we couldn't I'm positive. Just... You're right. If only it were real. Uh, but it's not. Francis? Yes? I had breakfast with Guy this morning. You did? She's going to be our new partner. You can't do that. I've done it. It's all going to be over. No. It's just going to change. We've still got time to come up with the money. What if we tried to get a loan? Francis, we couldn't pay it back. We can't work like this anymore. It's too hard. This was the best thing. Out of all the people who wanted to work with us, he was the best choice. You think? Doesn't look like he can do too much damage. Some of his ideas are good. <laughs> he wants to change the picture frames, but at least he wants to keep the museum here. Most people who contacted me wanted to completely tear the museum down. But we at least need to put up a good fight. And we will. But this is not going to be easy. He's a slick one. He's primarily interested in chairs. <laughs> There's really nothing to argue about. It's done.
It's a wonderful collection. Yes. Do you work here? I do. The museum looks different. I remember it being larger, and I just was wondering if maybe part of it was closed, if they were getting ready for a new exhibit, or what the deal was. Oh, well, we used to be larger, but we've um, truncated things and, and leased space to a coffee shop on that side and a boutique over there. Well, that explains it. I thought I came in the wrong door, but I didn't want to come right out and tell you because nobody charged me anything. <laughs> There's no admission fee anymore. Really? That's cool. <laughs> Yes, at first I thought so too. But then with no admission fee, they said they really couldn't afford to maintain the old permanent collection. So piece by piece, we've gotten rid of it all. It was a slow truncation. I'm sorry it's gone. This has always been my favorite museum. Really? Absolutely. I mean, I like the other museum, especially when they have us event nights on Thursdays. You know, where you dress up and they give a lecture on the exhibit and then you eat at the restaurant they've got there. I wouldn't know. Well, I love that. But your museum is still my favorite. I don't recall ever having seen you here before. Well, in, out. You know how it is. Mm. Do you recognize a lot of people who come in and out of here? Usually. Oh. Well, I love the intimacy. <laughs> and coming here was always really cheap, even when you did charge admission. That was the best thing about this place. A visit here was intimate and affordable. A place to house the new stuff. The things we found exciting that didn't have the cachet the other museum expected for its art to have. Art created by members of this very community. Chosen for the way it represented us. What it said about us and to us. We used to have six rooms. There was the blue room and the green gallery, the, without the E. <laughs> and the red square. But the blue room was always my favorite. And we used to have traveling exhibits and the occasional artist in residence. In its heyday, this was one hell of a place. I'm glad it's free, but I'm sorry they made it smaller. Me too. They've um, annexed some of the gallery space into extra floor space for the gift shop, leased off the two ends like I told you before, and moved all of the art into the green gallery that you see here. The pink pig exhibit is on permanent display. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a fabulous exhibit. Mm. All those pink pigs, over and over and over again. Some exactly alike, some different. <laughs> you look at the one pink pig sitting in the pasture and you think, it's just a pink pig in a pasture. But then you see another pig, and another one, and you think, God. The artist really took the time to know these pigs inside and out. <laughs> I mean, God, it must have taken a year. Over three years. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it makes you respect all the work that went into the painting. He knew that pig. Every line, every curve. You look at the pale ones, and the purple ones, and the spotted ones, and you realize that he, he spent so much time just deciding what exact shade of color that pink pig was supposed to be. <laughs> All these hours, days, years of work, it really makes you see the pig in a whole new way. Personally, I think the managing partner likes the exhibit because it helps to sell the pig pillows. <laughs> I'm still partial to what we used to have, though. Remnants of it are still here. The neon sign outside the building still stands. It's a landmark, an actual Oscan design. Did you see it when you came in? Of course. It's huge. You can see it for blocks. It's pretty hard to miss this place. Well, how can you sell museum-quality merchandise without a museum? Hmm? So they left the sign. There are other remnants, too. Um, see the linoleum on the floor over by the blue room? That's from the old days. And that's really cool. It was painted by a local artist, John Jansen. He painted over the stained linoleum in his kitchen. He certainly made a statement. To me, it speaks of the desire for beauty wherever you are. It comments on making beauty out of ordinary objects and has much to say about the economics of the city and poverty and art. And to the left of the pink pig, hey, um, <laughs> would you like to see something most people don't get to see? Sure. This is the only piece we still have that is indicative 
of our old permanent collection. Plentitude. Now you won't find Plentitude at the other museum. She was not painted by Hockney or Monet, Renoir or Goya. But to me, Plentitude is priceless. She is the very first painting I actually heard speak. Now, 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 before you decide to commit the... I suppose I should explain myself. She didn't speak to me out loud. She came in through my soul. Take me, she screamed. Preserve me. Save me for better times, because when I am gone, I am gone forever. But while I am here, I am alive forever. <laughs> of course, Frances, she's the one who's here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. She has a completely different story about what Plenitude said to her, but you'd have to come back on a Thursday to hear that one. I can only tell you what I know. Isn't she beautiful? It's very interesting. My favorite thing about this place, <laughs> for now at least. Francis and I have the rest of the old permanent collection in storage. There's no room for it now, but when the time is right, we're going to bring everything back and put it back where it belongs. Gertrude's garden in that room, death and life on that wall. So you like plentitude? Yes. <laughs> now, I came because my friend Jill is getting married, thank God. And we want some of those blue vases we saw advertised in the paper for the tables of the reception. Uh, I'm going to need 30. Can I buy 30 here, or do I have to place an order? No, we might have 30 in stock. A baby in the red square. Right through the door and to the left on the little table. Oh, be sure to check out the posters on the far wall and take a look at the miniatures on your right. Thank you. Come back and visit us often. We are so honored to have you here. <laughs>